Hey everyone, welcome to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be talking about setting up a development environment from scratch. So we're going to be installing an IDE, uh, we're going to be installing Node, Git, and creating a GitHub account, setting up a repository for the first time, and downloading and installing the Angular web framework, and then pushing all of those code changes up to our newly created repository and seeing how everything looks. Yeah, and just as a forewarning, we're still figuring out all the video and the audio and screen cap and everything, everything that comes with starting a YouTube channel. So just bear with us and let's get started. Okay, so now we're gonna get started installing VS Code. Uh, we're currently on an Ubuntu machine, but the install for uh, Windows or Mac is also very similar and just as easy. You should just be able to download an installer and run it on your machine and that should take care of it. An IDE is really going to help you write your code faster. Um, it's going to spot errors quicker. It's going to have what's called IntelliSense. So it will give you code suggestions based on the code you've already written. And a lot of IDEs have tools that will help you integrate with Git and GitHub. So it'll make the whole process of committing your code a lot smoother. Later on in the episode, we will have all of our files in here and we'll be able to start coding. All right, so the next step here is to install Node and NPM. Basically, all the, the code that we write in our Angular app application is TypeScript, and we need to compile and translate that into a language that the browser understands, which is JavaScript, and Node helps with that. Um, NPM, we need that as well because all of the third-party uh, packages that we're going to use in our Angular application, such as like CSS frameworks and other um, packages that help us write better Angular. Um, NPM helps us install those and does all our dependency management with that. So um, this is the Node.js website. If you're on Windows or Mac, you probably use these um, install um, buttons on the home screen, but we're actually gonna, gonna use some Linux commands to install Node.js. Um, just using the Ubuntu terminal. So, yeah, and one of the prereqs on the Ubuntu machine is that we have to install curl, so that's what you're seeing us do here. Yeah, so now that that's done, the next step is to in curl. Um, basically, we're going to curl the install dependencies from um, a repo that's out on the web. Uh, that was 12 and 13. Oh, it is 12. Okay, now that that is pulled down, the next step is to install those dependencies that we pulled down. Okay, now that that's finished, we will be able to run version commands to just make sure that they're actually installed. So we'll do a node-version, and we can also do an npm-version. I spelled that wrong. <laughs> there you go, now you know that node and npm are both installed on our Ubuntu machine. Okay, so the next step is to install Git. Uh, here, we're on the Git for Windows screen. Obviously, we're on an Ubuntu, so we're not gonna be using that, but if you were on a Windows, this is where you would head. Git is just a CLI tool, so uh, there's not gonna be an interface that's gonna be downloaded with this. It's just a command line tool. Um, so Git is a version control manager. It's gonna help you track your changes over time. Uh, it will also help you when you're in a collaborative environment, when you're merging your code changes with someone else's changes. And so to avoid having to deal with the terminal all the time, uh, different services like GitHub and Atlassian Bitbucket, and they've kind of provided a user interface on top of this technology that uh, allows you to see your changes and your code in a much more user-friendly way. All right, so the next step here is we're going to uh, sign into GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub account, um, you can go through the easy um, few steps of creating your GitHub account. It will ask you um, for your email, a password, obviously. It will make you verify your email. Um, and yeah, you can check out more information at the GitHub website if you like. Um, we'll just go ahead and just sign into our account that we've already created for small batch devs. So we're going to go ahead and create our first repo in here. Um, for our Angular project that we'll be creating in the next few steps. Um, just SPD intro for a repository name. We aren't going to um, initialize the repository with a readme because the Angular CLI that we'll be using later on will actually try to create a readme, readme file. Um, so if that's already there, then it won't work. So we'll just leave that out for now. And there we go. Here's our first rep uh, GitHub repo. 
So the next thing we're going to do here is clone our repo that we just created to our local machine. So if we do git clone and then use the link that's provided um, here. <laughs> so now we've cloned our repo. Now, as you can see here, um, we do have a sbd-intro directory on our Linux machine. There's nothing in the SBD intro directory because we did not initialize it with the readme. Um, so we will start adding some files here shortly. All right, so the next step is to install the Angular CLI. Uh, this is not going to generate a new project, but it will give us the tools and the commands to generate all the boilerplate for a new web project. So we're just gonna run npm install dash g Angular CLI. And the dash g is gonna allow this command to be installed on our global machine. So it's not gonna be specific to this directory like a normal npm install would. Now that Angular CLI is installed, we can use the ng new command to generate a new project. And we're also gonna use the directory flag so it doesn't create a subfolder in the directory that our repository was cloned to. And it's gonna ask us several questions like, what do you wanna name your project? Uh, do you wanna add Angular routing? And yes, we do. You Generally, you always want to add Angular routing. It's going to save you a lot of time in the future and set up a lot of boilerplate for you. Um, as far as the style sheet, this is really just personal preference. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and choose SAS. And there we go. It's installing and creating all of our files. Um, the installing packages is just installing all the dependencies that Angular uses to run. So our new project is created. So if we go ahead and run it, a code dot that's going to open up VS code that's just a CLI shortcut it'll work on Windows Mac and Linux uh, so here we go we're now in our repo and you can see all the files that angular has generated uh, inside VS code it's going to highlight all of the files that were just added as green uh, this is the git integration that we were talking about this is where the IDE really comes in handy uh, so you can see we have a source folder. This is where we're going to have all of our project files. That's where we're gonna be doing the bulk of our work. Uh, you can see the package JSON in there. That's gonna list all the dependencies that our project requires. And now if we look at the terminal, a git status is going to show us all the file changes that git is tracking. So we can see all the files in red. Red means that while they have changed, they haven't been added to a git commit. So that's the next step. Right, and so the next step is to add all of these files to um, to be committed. Um, now if we do a git status, it'll be green. That means they're ready to be committed. Um, then we can actually just go ahead and commit them. The dash M flag just means we're gonna add a message. Uh, mes messages are always nice to add to your commit. Um, that way you know exactly what, what uh, changes have been made. So we're just gonna add a little initial commit message here. And since this is the first time we're running git on this machine, we do have to set up a config. So we're just going to enter our user email and user name. Um, whenever we push our commit to the actual repository in the cloud, we're going to also have to sign in with a username and password. Okay, so now that we have our config set, we're going to go ahead and try to push this up to GitHub. So we, had, we created a commit with an initial commit message. These are all the files that are gonna be pushed up. And now it's gonna ask us to sign in. It's gonna ask us to sign in every time we do this. Uh, there is an environment file or environment config you can set so that it doesn't ask you every time. But for now, we're just going to sign in once. And there we go. Our commit has been pushed to a master branch in our GitHub repository. So if we go ahead and take a look at the repository online, now you'll see all the code that was on our local machine has been pushed up. You can see all the same files, the same folders, and here's our commit history. Okay, so now that our code is pushed up to GitHub, we can use a nice little feature that's built into the Angular CLI um, to actually serve up our code so that we can open it in a browser. So we're gonna type ng serve o, um, and what this will basically do is actually compile our TypeScript into JavaScript package it all up, and then actually open it in Firefox um, or Google Chrome or whatever your default um, browser is. And there you go. That's our, this is our SBD intro, intro app. Um, it is in Firefox, and it's built with a little bit of documentation, as you can see. Um, that's just a standard 
Okay, so over the course of this video, we showed you how to install an IDE, install Node, Git, set up a GitHub account, create a repo, and clone that repository on the local machine, as well as install Angular, and generate a new Angular project, and push that up to your new repository. So we hope you learned a lot. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching. Yes, and don't forget to like and subscribe.